So section A here, and that's the A in the box. It doesn't mean an A chord or an A note. There are two sections in this tune, the A section and the B section, or the A part and the B part. This is the A part. It starts with a repeat sign, thick line, thin line, two dots. So we're going to repeat from here later on in the tune. On the right hand side, you can see that we have three notes, a G, a C and another G. And the C above that G note is a chord. And that's not for you, the concertina player. It's for you if you're looking at this and you're wishing to accompany uh, the concertina player. It's just reminding you that there's a C chord played behind this bar. But, you know, don't worry about that if you're the concertina player. You are actually playing a C chord in the left hand. Uh, but we'll get to that in a minute. Let's do the right hand. Uh, we notice that the intro is all on the pull. These first two main bars, bars one and two, are all on the push. So your first note is G, and it's button number eight, finger three, push, C row. And so it's the same button that you played for the F, which is simply pushing instead of pulling. The next note is a C, which is on button number nine, so the next button down, finger four, and then you come back to the G. Now, the timing is one, two, three, and. So the G, the first note is a crotchet, so it takes up the whole of the first beat. The next note, the C, is a dotted crotchet, so it takes up the whole of beat two, half of beat three, and the final G comes in on the end count of beat three. So that is one, two, three, and. And like I've said many times, bars of three, four never make sense on their own. You always need the next bar to get the sense. Now look at the left hand. A simple um pa pa. You've got low C, little finger. It's the C row. It's button number one. Little finger pushing in. All on the push, don't forget. And then the two notes that play together are C and E. So you've got C, the octave to that C, and then E. So C and E play together. That's buttons three and four, also on that C row. So you have an um, pa, pa. Now, if you look up and down, you can see how the notes slot together. The G on the right-hand side goes with the C on the left-hand side. The C on the right-hand side goes with that first pair of notes on the left-hand side. And then the the par, if you like, the C and the E are played on their own, although really the C on the right hand is ringing still, and then the final G is on its own. So, so one, two, three, and that's the overall counting. You take that from the beginning, you'll have this. And then you get into bar two, and you have the note E, which is finger two on the push, that's button number seven. It's a normal heady note, so it's on the C row. Back to the C that you've already played, and the G you've already played, and the C you've already played. And this time in bar two, we have a crotchet, a crotchet and two quavers. So you count that one, two, three, and. And the bass line is the same as the first bar. It's the um pa pa, the C note, and the C and the E together. So let's play the pickup bar and the first two main bars. So apart from those first three notes on the pull, very much on the push, so make sure you start with the bellows open a bit so that you've got some air to play with at the beginning. <laughs> 